All right, welcome everybody to Learn to Knit a Bulky Hat with Marley Bird. Um, I'm Dana, I'm one of the editors with, out of Fave Crafts. I'm joined today by my colleague, Ashley. Um, and of course, Marley Bird is going to be teaching you how to make this fabulous, gorgeous hat today. Um, just a couple of housekeeping things as we get started. We're recording the webinar right now and you're going to get a copy of it in 24 hours. So if you fall a little behind, we're kind of we're kind of rushing through, not rushing, I shouldn't say that, but we're we're moving through today to make sure you get to learn all of the elements of making this hat. So you have all the tools ready to complete the project. So, so if you fall behind, you, you can't keep up because it's it's a fast paced class. We're sending you the recording so you can watch it again and again um, so you can learn how to make the pattern. Uh, please use the Q&A field in Zoom or in Zoom to ask us questions. Um, you can ask questions in the chat. I just, the chat moves so quickly that it's a little harder to keep up with. Um, so I'd encourage you to use the Q&A feature to ask questions and please do ask questions as we go. Um, so that's, I think that's it for the housekeeping stuff. Marley, if you wanna go to the next slide. Uh, we wanna thank our sponsor for today's class. So this is brought to you free by um, our digital magazine, I Like Knitting. I Like Knitting is an, is an entirely online publication. It publishes six times a year with these beautiful tech edited knitting patterns. And with today's class, you can sign up and get it for 75% off so that you would get the year's subscription, those six issues for $11.88. Plus when you sign up, you get access to all of the back issues. Every pattern that's ever been published through the magazine, you get access to when you sign up. Um, so I'm going to drop that link in the chat shortly. It's highlikeknitting.com slash webinar 22. And with that, Marley, we're, we're ready to go. All right. Okay, I'm going to stop this. And hello, everybody. Um, okay, so I don't know if you're going to make it to where I'm the only one on screen or not. Yes, there I am in all of my glory. Hello, everyone. <laughs> um, as Dana so helpfully introduced, I'm going to move my water so I don't spill it. I'm Marley Bird. Um, I am a knitwear and crochet designer. I'm an ambassador for Yarnspirations Yarn. Um, I am the creator at the uh, Marley Bird YouTube channel. And then, um, you know, I do stuff on Instagram and I'm dabbling into TikTok. I'm not real sure about that yet. Still feel like it's for the young kids. I feel like I'm an imposter there, so I'm not real sure, but um, I'm trying. One of my favorite things to do when I teach knitting and crochet is to watch that sort of aha moment of beginners. So doing this particular hat is exciting for me because it's an absolute beginner hat. I'm gonna walk you through as if you have never knit before. Now, having said that, if we were in a one-on-one -on -one class, we would probably spend a little bit more time on the various aspects of things before we move forward. But given that we're in a time constraint here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to teach you. And then when it's time that I have to move on to the next step, just remember this is getting recorded. You'll be able to go back and watch this. Or even if you wanted to go to my YouTube channel, I have a YouTube video on this exact hat. So you could watch it in two different ways. You could see what I was like, like three years ago teaching this hat. Like, you know, it's, it's totally up to you. So my point there is that we are not leaving you behind. It's just, it might take you a little bit longer to catch up. No big deal. Everything's going to be good. We're going to have a joyful experience. I put a link to um, the pattern today um, in the chat. I think I just did because I didn't know if Dana had a link to the pattern also. So I, I, I've put it there. If you have one too, Dana, go ahead. I mean, it's the same. It's the pattern. Um, it is on my website. You could, I think you can purchase the ad free PDF for this. Also, all that means is that you don't have the ads. And so you can get the ad free PDF. Um, it's a very, very simple hat. We are just going to be knitting today. There is no purling, anything like that. It's knitting and seaming it up, uh, which is not that difficult. And it's, it's pretty darn easy. Now, if you happen to look at the pattern, you'll notice there are a bunch of different numbers in there for sizes. Really, at the end of the day, you guys, this thing is super easy. As long as it, whatever you're making fits around your head, that's what you need. So if you're just like, I'm not real sure what size to choose and you pick one and you put it around your head and it's like too big around your head and it's like flopping down like it's a cowl, then it's too big. And then, you know, hey, you made a cowl. So <laughs> just don't seem up the top, you have a great cowl. But if it's if you're putting it around your head and it's not quite meeting, then it's too small. I mean, that's 
that's as as low tech as we can get right that's really how easy this is and with the big bulky yarn we don't have to do a lot of stitches which is really great now the yarn i did use for the sample you guys is no longer available but that doesn't mean you can't go out and grab another big bulky yarn um this is actually this is the hat you're going to be making these are two different colorways um ever since we've made this hat ever since i made this hat my family and I have been wearing these. My son, Josiah, actually commandeered this one. He wears it quite often. He loves it. Um, and then this one I wear more often than he does. It's pretty, they're pretty great hats. They're very big, very bulky, very forgiving. Um, learning the knit stitch is a very easy thing to do. And so that's what we're gonna jump in and do. All right, so let's go to my hands. Here we go. So I know that in the pattern, I think I called for size 13 needles. Uh, the ones I'm using today are a little bit bigger. Man, they're glitzy. This is actually like the first time I've used these, but they were nice and big. And I was like, you know what? Those are fine. We're going to use those. Um, so I, I'm using size 15 today, but it calls for size 13. And again, guys, whatever size you use, just make sure that whatever you're making can fit around your head. That's all. That's the, that's the only criteria. I'm also using Burnout Blanket Ogo today. So this is just an Ogo, it comes in three colors. We could mix and match colors if we want, or we can do what Yarn Inspirations likes to say is Ogo with the flow, where you just go from one end and just continue on to the other. And I mean, I don't know how much of this it will take, but it could be that it's only one color. It could be that we get into a little bit of this. You could do anything you want, but this is a nice semi-bulky yarn. I mean, I guess it is a bulky yarn um, and it's pretty readily available to everyone. So I thought I would grab this and we would use this today. Now, the exact number of stitches you would use for your pattern is written in the pattern or for the size you're making. I'm just gonna do a few stitches today to make sure that we can get through all of the, the um, uh, stuff that we need to get through, okay? So we are gonna start off with a um, modified long tail cast on. You're gonna understand what I mean by that in a minute. First things first, when you do a long tail cast on, you want to make sure that the tail that you're using is three times the total length of what you plan on making. So, excuse my dogs, I apologize. They were upstairs, but they came down. If we wanted this to be 22 inches, then we wanna make sure that we have a tail that is at least 66 inches, okay? Um, it, and that's not like, I mean, it doesn't have to, you don't have to sit there and take a tape measure out. Really just kind of like figure out how long it is and just do it three times, all right? That's, that's a really good guesstimate on how long a tail should be. But then I always err on the side of caution and give myself a little extra. And then it's at this point that I'm gonna put my slip knot, okay? So to do a slip knot, here's my tail. I'm sorry, Pearl, go upstairs. I'm so sorry, you guys, I'm so sorry. All right, so to do my slip knot, I'm gonna take my tail, put it on the palm of my hand, take my working yarn, wrap it around my forefinger and my middle finger. And when I come back up, I'm gonna cross over, rotate my hand over, and then I'm just gonna hold that, the working yarn that I had, okay? So now I essentially have wrapped my, my hand twice, right? My fingers twice. And then I'm gonna go underneath the front one, grab the back one, and pull it off my fingers. And I have a slip knot, okay? Now there's lots of different ways to make a slip knot, but at the end of the day, it all results in the same thing. That just happens to be the easiest way for me to explain it. So once again, tail of the yarn in the palm of your hand, working yarn, wrap around your forefinger and your middle finger. And when you come back up, you're gonna cross over. Rotate your hand, hold your working yarn, underneath the front loop, grab the back loop and pull it off, okay? And here we go. Somebody is asking, why do we need to start with a magic or with a long tail cast on? You don't actually have to, but um, this is going to transition really well into um, working in the garter stitch of this hat. So it makes for a seamless transition from the cast on to the garter stitch. That's why I chose to do this cast on. Now we're gonna do a modified long tail cast on. All that means is we're gonna do it this way. You're gonna hold your working yarn in your right hand. Take your tail, I want you to grab your tail just like this. Grab your tail, 
with your thumb sticking out, like you're going to hijack or like hijack, <laughs> um, hitchhike. And then what we're going to do is we're going to scoop around our tail so that it comes up just like so. All right, let's do that again. Here's my tail. I'm going to grasp my tail. Take my thumb. I'm going to scoop it around my tail and back up. All right, so here's how I do it. You got this? This works for left-handed and right-handed because we're using both hands. You see that? All right, so my right hand has my needle in it. I'm gonna take my needle. I'm gonna go underneath this strand over here on the outside of my thumb. Now I'm gonna take my, my right hand and I'm going to take this yarn and wrap it around my needle. I have this little window right here where I've, I went through my thumb originally. And what I wanna do is I wanna take this needle and I'm gonna swivel it right through that window and let the yarn fall off of my thumb pull my tail, and now I have a stitch. Let's do it again. Grasp my yarn, scoop my thumb, up my thumb, wrap with my left, my right hand. So I have that wrap, swivel my needle through that loop on my thumb, and then let the yarn go off of my thumb and pull. Grasp the tail scoop, up the thumb, around the needle, through the window, off the porch. Grasp, scoop, up the thumb, around the needle, out the window, off the porch. Now, if you're familiar with long tail cast on, you don't have, I mean, we're doing the long tail cast on. We're just doing it with two hands instead of one. So keep going. If you've got that one, keep going. I'm going to show you how you would do it with one hand if you wanted to. With one hand, we take our fingers, we go in between the tail and the working yarn, and you open it up. And what you're going to see here is that positions the tail around our thumb just like when I grasped everything. And now we have the working yarn around my finger. So if you wanted to do it this way, this would be up the thumb. Here's your around, you know, down the finger, which is wrapping around the needle, through the window, off the thumb. See how it's the same thing, but it's with one hand. Up the thumb, down the finger, through the window, off the thumb. All right, so somebody asked, do we have to do the long tail cast on for this hat? Once again, you do not have to. However, if we're going to be knitting something and we want it to look, you know, like a semi nice finished look, this particular cast on is actually doing a knit stitch with a nice um, edging here. And so as we transition to garter stitch, it looks like the, the stitch pattern goes all the way to the base of our, our pattern. So it makes for a really nice finish, okay? Now I'm just doing a, a few um, stitches here because I wanna be able to get through quite a bit of this with all of you. But you, and you guys can do it this way too. Like if you're using an Ogo or you're using scrap yarn, you just wanna do a few stitches like I am, you can absolutely do that. Um, guys, I got these needles as a gift from the company that actually made them. I don't think they make them anymore. Um, they were a gift. So, um, but they're Addy needles if you're interested. Okay. When you get the number of stitches cast on, that's what you've done here. Once you get the number of stitches cast on, you're then going to turn your work. Um, and here's, here's what I mean by that. So we have all of our stitches cast on. We have this nice ridge all pointing down to the bottom. And all of our stitches are in our right hand. So what we want to do is we want to take this needle in our right hand. We're going to place it in our left hand. And as you do that, that turns the work, okay? And now we're gonna completely ignore our tail and we're gonna take our working yarn. And this is what we are going to use to work all of these stitches. And what you're gonna notice is as you go into these stitches to knit them, the process is just the same as when you took our working yarn and we wrapped it around the needle. It's the same process, all right? So I've turned my work and we're going to knit. You ready? So. 
if this is my first stitch, I'm going to go in it from left to right. I'm going to stick my needle right through that stitch. Here's what it looks like if you're looking like that, but it looks just like this. I went right through the stitch. I'm going to take my yarn and I'm going to wrap the needle. Now, what does this look like? Imagine this needle here was my thumb. All right. Imagine that's my thumb. I went up my thumb. I'm going around my needle. And now this is my window, right? So now I take my needle out that window and then off the thumb, which will jump. That means this stitch needs to jump off my needle. And that's one. Let's do it again. In the stitch, around my needle. You're gonna wanna hold this yarn to create tension so that it's easy to pull it through, through the, the stitch there or through the window, if you're thinking of it that way through the window, off the needle, in, around, out, off, in, around, out, off, in, around, out, off. Now, those of you who are true beginners, this might be really awkward. You might be losing stitches. You might be shaking a little bit. Your stitches might be loose on your needles. They might be too tight on your needles. I am here to tell you all of that is perfectly normal, okay? All of that is perfectly normal. Give yourself some grace. Give yourself some patience. Understand that you need to train your hands to make these motions, to hold these needles, to hold the yarn. So as much as you are most likely highly intelligent, can understand what I'm doing, but your hands just don't seem to want to do it, please understand that that is perfectly normal and natural. It literally is the old adage of practice makes perfect. You've got to train the, the muscles in your hands and the, the, um, the neurons and stuff that fire to, from your brain to tell your hands what to do. We need to train that path. Okay. So it's okay. I want you guys to understand. I taught my mom how to knit and I taught her on camera. You guys can actually watch it on my YouTube channel, but you'll see she was shaking when she was first doing her first stitches and it was tricky and it was hard and she did not give up. And now she is a wonderful knitter. So you, whoops, and that's okay. If it does that, just put your needle back in. If you give yourself some time and some patience, it will all work out okay. Remember, I've been knitting for gosh, 20 years, I think now. So I have had some practice just so you guys know, I do make it look easy. I understand that, but, um, you at some point will make it look easy as well. Now, here's the really cool thing. What you just learned, that's what we're going to do for the rest of the hat. So once you've mastered this, you've mastered 95% of your project. All right. So we're going to turn our work and do it again. You guys ready? Because all of our yarn is over here in our right hand. But when we knit, we knit off of our left hand needle. So we're going to put our needle into our left hand, put the empty needle back into our right hand, and we're going to do it again. Okay. This is why I say it doesn't matter if you're left handed or right handed, because you use both hands when you knit. Okay. Um, and then I am knitting, this is something you guys might run into. I'm knitting, um, English style today with the yarn in my right hand. Um, typically I knit with the yarn in my left hand, but I don't want to confuse you guys. And most, um, beginners for the most part, usually start with the yarn in their right hand, unless they're crocheters typically. All right. So I've, I'm back to the beginning. Here is the number one thing I want to teach you guys. Okay. So this is your number one tip because it's one of the first mistakes beginners make. Are you guys ready? When you turn your work, this first stitch wants to be a little bit loose. So as beginners, we're like, oh, it's not supposed to be that loose. I'm gonna just pull up on my yarn and oh, look, that looks so much tighter. It looks so much better. But what you've done there is you've made it now look like there's two stitches there where there was only one, right? What you've really done is you took the purl bump from the row below and you pulled it up and you have thus shortened your actual knit stitch. This is one of the problems beginners do and they start to knit too tight. 
when you turn your work, you want to make sure that that pearl bump is on the bottom of your needle there. All right. And make sure your yarn is down here. You have not extended that up to make it, to make it tighter to which you're like, well, then Marley, how do I tighten that stitch? If it's loose, I'm going to show you here. You guys ready? We're going to do what I call the wiggle and the tug. All right. This is really simple. The wiggle and the tug. You go into the stitch, yarn around your needle, come out the stitch. When you jump off, when this stitch jumps off your left hand needle, here's the wiggle and the tug. You're going to wiggle your needle, your right hand needle, and tug your working yarn. As you do that, it tightens the stitch below the stitch on your needle and it cleans it up. It's called the wiggle and the tug. You only need to do that right here at the start. After that, you just keep going. You just go into the next stitch and knit and just work. Now, some of you might be thinking, well, Marley, my needles look different than yours, not only because yours have those Swarovski crystals in them, but why, why do you have that cord on your needles? I'm using a circular needle today, but I'm using it as a straight needle. You'll see I'm turning my work back and forth. All it means is instead of having a really long needle that just ends, my needles are joined together. So I could work something quote unquote in the round with these needles, but it also makes it really easy to work things straight. It, put le it puts less strain on my wrists because I'm not holding a bunch of weight like this. So that's why I chose to use circular needles for this. That does not mean it can only be made with circular needles. You can use straight needles. You can use any material needles you want. I just prefer the circulars because it's easier, especially when I'm doing a tutorial like this because the ends are not clicking on the bottom of my desk the whole time. Now I know that I'm just talking along here and I'm trying to just slowly demonstrate how to do these knit stitches. Cause sometimes, you know, they say what picture is worth a thousand words. I feel like that's the same with video. Just watching me knit can probably, can probably, was that the right way? Probably, probably makes it easier for a lot of you than hearing my words describe what I'm doing. So I'm just trying to, oh, sorry. I am trying to, let me straighten this out. All right, there we go. Y'all saw me put this on, do not disturb, right? Y'all saw me do it every time, every single time. <laughs> Anyways, I'm trying to just sit here and knit away so that hopefully it just will answer more questions than um, I'm doing with my words. So while I'm just knitting, because this is what you're doing, you guys, once you get that cast on, you are just going to knit. You're knit, 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 knit until the pattern measures um, however tall you want it to be. You want it to be taller than your head because when it all comes together, you lose some of that height. So that's basically what it is. I mean, guys, this is probably one of the easiest things ever. You don't really need a pattern to be printed out or anything. It's, it's so basic and so easy. But I'm going to ask Dana or Ashley if uh, you guys can uh, tell me if there are any questions that I need to answer as I'm just knitting along and letting everybody watch. This comment from Virginia is so lovely. She says she can't wait until it's emailed so she can save it and use it to make a bunch of hats for charity and the homeless. Awesome. Um, yeah, instead of, I guess she does crochet, which is wonderful. She wants to do the knit hats as well. Fantastic. So um, Virginia, are you a, a long time knitter or do you want me to show you how to hold the yarn in your left hand as a crocheter? Um, typically that's um, easier for crocheters to pick up when it comes to knitting because in crochet, most right-handed crocheters hold their yarn in the left hand. I think seeing continental style would be awesome. I love knitting continental too. I do too. All right. So at the end of this row, I will show continental for sure. And then I do want to let everybody know that I have a lot of videos on my YouTube channel showing continental um, specifically I did an entire series of showing crocheters how to knit. And the whole point of it was to show continental and to make correlations between knitting and crochet. So that way you can easily knit. Um, and we've had great success with that. We've had so many people make some amazing stuff. So much so there are some 
of the um, boot campers, that's what we call them, by Crafty Boot Camp. Some of the boot campers have gone to yarn shops and told people what they're making. And people are like, oh, how long have you been knitting? And they're just like, oh, a couple months. And they're shocked by what they're doing uh, with their knitting because it's just so fantastic. It's so fantastic. All right, so when I turn my work, I'm gonna change hands to hold my yarn. All of the motions and movements are the same. I'm just holding the yarn in my different hand. So I'm holding the yarn just like I do when I crochet. I'm still going into the stitch just like I did before. I'm still wrapping the yarn just like I did before. See how it goes over top, right? When it was over here, it was over top. It's the same thing. I'm over top, out the stitch and off. In, over top, out the stitch and off. Got that? In, over the top, out the stitch and off. And that's how you would knit continental. Now, here's the really cool thing, guys. As you are working on this, and maybe you, you're just like, oh, I'm going to bypass an actual pattern because Marley said I could, and I just have to make it fit around the head and this, that, and the other. One thing you have to think about, because this pattern really, guys, if you use the sort of recipe, what I'm talking about, it can work with any yarn and any needles. It doesn't have to be bulky. But I do want to warn you, when you're using bulky weight yarn, um, even though like say this measures 10 inches, by the time you put it on, you have to account for the girth or the width or the thickness, thickness, that's the word. You have to account for the thickness of the yarn because it's gonna eat up some of the space um, as it's close to the body. Um, so even though, let's say this was 10 inches around, if it was in the round, by the time it fits on a head, it could be nine inches. You know, does that make sense? Just like when you put on a puffy coat, the puffy coat looks bigger than it really is once you put it on because of all of the thickness of the puff. Um, sort of the same premise. So you want to make sure you account for that. But in the in the theory of just doing a, a recipe for this, I mean, you could use size seven needles and a worsted weight yarn and then make sure you have enough stitches. Let's say you, you had five stitches per inch and you wanted your hat to measure 20 inches. So 20 times five is what? Everybody tell me what 25 times five is. Anybody, anybody, anybody jump in? I'm waiting for somebody to leave a comment. What's 20 times five, everybody? I know what it is. I mean, I know what it is. I just wanna make sure anybody, anybody got it? There you go, a hundred. So if you wanted, if you wanted your project, say you got five stitches per inch with a size seven or eight needle and worsted weight yarn, you would cast on a hundred stitches and then you would just do garter stitch, right? Back and forth, back and forth. And you would get that 20 inches wide and you would do it until it's as tall as you want it to be. And you could use the same idea of cinching up the top of this hat, seaming it close and make that work. Does that make sense? Everybody got that? Perfect. Dana, any other questions going on? I'm just going to be knitting along here. I know it's about break time. Yeah, then we're there. We've got questions about, can you show continental left-handed? So that's uh, what I'm doing right now. Okay, right. Yep. Um, okay. One person's asking about purling, but that's not, that's not in the scope of this class today. Right. Um, but if you had a video, I mean, I can send that out later too. If you had a video showing continental for purling, a con there is a continental pearl video. I do have one. Um, I'll have to, I'll send it to you, but it's on the Marley bird. If you searched Marley bird continental pearl, you'd probably come up on YouTube also. Um, but then I also teach it in the by crafty class knitting for crocheters. Thank yeah. You. There's no purling in this hat. It's all garter stitch. Which some people might be like, well, why, why are we knitting a hat flat? Why do we want to make this to where we seam it up? Well, there's a couple reasons. For absolute beginners, doing something flat like this um, is, is a good learning tool. And then working knits back and forth, back and forth, give us this really nice garter stitch, right? If we were working in the round, something you might not know yet is if we did knits every single round in the round, we would get stockinette stitch. 
stock and net stitch naturally curls on itself. So we would have to account for curling. With the, the garter stitch, we don't have to account for any sort of curl. Um, it all lays nice and flat, so we don't have to worry about curling at all. Um, second, I don't have any decreases in this hat pattern. We're literally going to thread yarn through all of these stitches and pull it snug like a drawstring. So when it comes to like an easy pattern, this is almost as easy as it gets because we're essentially making a giant, more than a square, it's almost like a rectangle, um, and then seaming it up and making it close so that we get a really cool hat. All right, so I know that it's about mid-time break, so I'm gonna share my screen and let Dana jump in here for a second. So here we go, let me go to the next screen. Yes, please. There you go. All right, so everyone today we're in Learn to Knit a Bulky Hat. We have a bunch of upcoming classes on the docket and they're all free this month and in March. Um, so next week, same time, same day, we have Learn to Crochet 2.0. So if you tuned in to Learn to Crochet last month, this is the continuation. So you'll learn different stitches, different troubleshooting. Um, so that is next week. And then same idea with Learn to Knit 2.0. So we did original Learn to Knit um, last month. And then we've got 2.0, which will teach you the purl stitch, um, mm -hmm. among other like troubleshooting and tips for beginners to knitting. And that's in two weeks on Tuesday, February 22nd. Um, I don't have a slide week. for, oh, sorry, Marley. <laughs> I don't have a slide for the March classes. Uh, usually we just talk about one month at a time, but there are a bunch of March classes, three to be specific, listed also at our Eventbrite page. So definitely check out favecrafts.eventbrite.com and I'll drop that link in the chat as well. And you can see all of our upcoming classes and they're all free for the next couple of months. So that's cool. Next yeah. slide. Yes, please. There you go. And then just another thank you to our sponsor, I Like Knitting. Um, the, the great thing about I Like Knitting is all, because it's it's a digital magazine um, and it's a subscriber, you, know, you subscribe to it, all the patterns are tech edited. So you know that they're high quality patterns and there's no ads, uh, which, is, which is great. So um, I'll drop that link in the chat as well to sign up for the digital magazine where you'll get access to all of the back issues, all of the patterns we've ever published on I Like Knitting for like $12 for the whole year. Um, okay, with that, I, we're ready to get back, Marley. All right, cool. All right, so we are halfway through the class. I know yeah. you are not halfway through your hat yet. However, yeah. I need to show you how to finish up the hat and I wanna show you how to seam. So we're gonna jump to that part next. And of course my dog has come over and she wants to say hello. All right, so when you reach the, the length of your hat that you want it to be, you're just going to knit, knit, knit until it's like six and a half inches or nine and a half inches. It really, it doesn't matter. Um, to me, it matters to you. How, how tall do you want your hat to be, right? Um, I prefer a more slouchy hat, so I like it a little bit longer. And like I said, when it comes across at the top, you're gonna lose some of that height. So for example, this piece right here, if I go like this, what is that? It's about four and a half inches. No, it's not that. It's four inches, right? It's four inches. So let's measure it once everything is done and we'll see how tall it is after that. Once your hat measures the height, okay, we're not going to bind off. We're not going to decrease. We're simply going to thread yarn through all of these stitches. And we're gonna do it as if to knit. Now you can do it as if to purl, but I, I prefer to go into each of them as if to knit. Uh, I think it looks better. So that's what we're going to do. So I'm gonna show you what we're doing. First thing, when you are, you know what? Second, I'm gonna pause here for a second because there's something I want you. I, Say that you're going along and you need to add a new ball of yarn. I'm gonna show you how to do that because this is a beginner class. If you're at the end of the row, you wanna change your yarn at the end of the row, okay? So we're at the end of the row. Let's say we were changing colors. And so let's say I was gonna change to this color because I already have it out here. I can get it to come undone, right? Right, as I grab it, I tie a knot in it at the same time. That's fantastic, Marley. Well done. It takes skills, people. Okay. Oh my gosh. Okay. There we go. So if we wanted to 
And maybe it's not changed colors. Maybe you just have to add a new ball of yarn. It, it's really as easy as this. When you go to knit this first stitch, go into it, grab your new yarn and just knit with your new yarn. And then make sure you don't use your tail. Leave it nice long tail so you can weave that in. But then you just start knitting with your new yarn. It's just like that. There's no special secret, nothing. That's all you have to do. Okay, so when if you have to change yarns, you want to change colors, that's literally all you do. Just make sure you change colors at the end of the row, at which point somebody might be like, well, what if I can get almost to the end of the row? Should I change there? Nope. Rip that out. Change colors at the start of your row. It's okay if you have extra yarn left out. Okay, guys. So now you know how to change colors or add a new ball of yarn. So now we're going to um, cut our yarn and cinch this up. So the first thing is we don't want to have to add a new ball of yarn cinching this up. So I always, again, err on the side of caution of making sure I'm cutting a tail that's nice and long to get through all of this. The other thing you could do is have a tail that's nice and long that could also seam up the side if you wanted to go from cinching this up and then seaming up the side. But at the end of the day, it's just you want to make sure you have a nice long tail. So I'm going to make sure I have a nice long tail here. And then I'm gonna thread this onto a tapestry needle. I prefer the metal ones personally. You can use whatever kind you like. That's what I like. All right. I'm gonna go into each of these stitches as if to knit. So I'm gonna pretend like this is my knitting needle. I'm gonna go from left to right into the stitch and then pull my yarn through and off into the stitch, pull my yarn through and off. So I'm just, I'm just securing all of these, okay? Could I go in like this and do it? Yes, I just prefer, I prefer this way. Like if you ever do any of my patterns ever, you'll notice that I always say to go into the tops of these as if to knit. Now here, I'm gonna show you, sometimes I'll do it like this where I'll go through several and then pull them through, okay? So that I don't have to do one, but one for one. So I'll go one, two, and then pull them through. And if you're using the burnout blanket, it is a little bit tricky because it is a chenille yarn or not chenille, like a, it's like a polar fleece feeling chenille yarn. All right, once you've done that, all my stitches are in there, it's nice and secure. This is actually like one of my favorite parts because it's like magic, just pulling this clothes like a drawstring, all right? So I'm just holding it, pulling this nice and closed. Now I will warn you if you're using a yarn that does not, it's not very strong and stable and can't pull, you can't pull on it without breaking, that's not a good idea. So you wanna make sure you're using one that's nice and stable. Just pull it closed. And then what essentially I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my, my needle here and thread it through some of these, coming back through this, the side I started on to make it closed. See that? So I'll go through a couple of them, but that's not good enough to keep that closed. So then I'll pop my needle to the inside, turn it inside out, which FYI, both sides are about are the same because they're both garter stitch. And then I'll weave back and forth through the stitches here, trying to secure it because you don't want that top to come undone. Now, yours is gonna be way more bulkier than mine is because I don't have that many stitches here. Um, if you need yours to be a little bit more secure, you can always use a cotton thread and go around the top with the cotton thread to make it really secure. That's actually what I did on my actual hats um, because I didn't want the top to come undone. So I went through with a, a cotton thread and secured it and closed that hole. If you don't want this hole closed, you can actually make this a messy bun hat. You just pull it to, to the point where you feel like, you know, it's about that big for a messy bun and then secure it. So that way it leaves that opening and then you can have a messy bun hat, okay? So I've secured this to the inside. What I could do now, I can either cut this or I can use this tail to actually seam my piece closed. So here's the cool thing. If you don't want to have a whole lot of yarn tails all over the place, the best thing to do is kind of guesstimate or kind of uh, think ahead, either leave a long tail at the start 
so that you can use it to seam up or you a long tail at the end to, to use it to seam down. Either one works, okay? That would be great. But because I want you to be able to see what I'm doing today, I'm gonna grab the black to show how I'm going up the sides. Okay, everybody good with that? I'll, at least I'll get started with that and then I'll probably pull it out and then do it with the real yarn. So I'm just gonna grab some black here and show you that if you're doing this to where you didn't have a tail here, you didn't have enough tail up here and you needed to join new yarn, this is how you would join, all right? First off, I have the right side of the hat facing me. And you're gonna notice with the garter stitch, we have these nice ridges, right? We have these really cool ridges. And what we're going to do is on this side, you'll notice that we have like a frowny face, right? A frowny face, a frowny face. And over here, we you can see that there's frowny, well, there's frowny faces and there's smiley faces. So I'm gonna look for the frowny face over here and I'm gonna look for the smiley face over here. And I'm gonna go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And it should, if everything works out, it should make it come together and make it look rather seamless. Now, if that becomes too difficult for you at all, literally just pick up a bit on either side and just seam it up. Nobody is ever gonna know, okay? Now, to start off your yarn, if it wasn't attached and we were just starting off, you wanna start off down here with the figure eight. So what I like to do is I'll pull, I go down here. And this is funny, Ashley probably knows more about this than I do because she is really good with sewing and quilting. But you come down here, pull up, and then, so I went up, I'm gonna come over here, go from the bottom and come up. And then I come back over here and go back from the bottom to the top, okay? I want you to see if I can do this. See how it gives the figure eight? You guys see that? I know it's black yarn, but there's a figure eight there. So when you pull this closed, everything is secured in there now and my yarn is ready to go for my seam. All right, so remember what I said, over here, I'm gonna go for my frowny face. Over here, I'm gonna go for my smiley face, which is a little bit in. I could also just pick up on the edges here if I wanted to. You guys, at the end of the day, you do you, all right? So I finished over here, so I'm gonna jump over here. I'm gonna go find my smiley face. There's my, it's a smile right there, all right? I'm gonna find my smile. I'm gonna come over here. I'm gonna look for the frown. There's my frown. Put, come up the frown. Jump over here, there's my smile. Over here, here's my frown. Kind of looks like a zigzag, right? I'm gonna just pull it snug. And if I'm using the same color yarn, it should look like this all comes together. See how it looks like that, that frown comes up against the smile, the frown comes up against the smile, the frown comes up against the smile. If it's the same color yarn, it shows up better. But can you see what I'm doing here? Everybody see that? Okay. All right. So I'm going to cut this and we're going to go with the, the like, doesn't this look like butterscotch to you? Anybody else? Looks like butterscotch to me. So I'm going to rip this out. We're going to do it with the same color yarn so you can see. Take out my figure eight that I did so securely. Marley, somebody's asking, generally, how long do you think it takes to complete the hat? So I finished the whole hat in an hour, if that helps. That's awesome. Now, I am a, fa a fast knitter, but with the bulky yarn, I actually knit slower because it's I'm not used to it. But I could finish it in an hour. Oh, a few people are asking, too. How, to show how you fit the yarn through the eye of that needle. They're, oh, they're mesmerized. <laughs> no problem. All right, so here's what I do. So you take your tail, here's the needle. Notice it has a nice big eye, all right? Nice big eye. I take my tail and I pinch it around the needle, take my needle out and just shimmy it on. Just like that. Let me show you again. I don't know if that was blocking it. Take my eye, wrap it around the yarn and pinch it. Take my needle out and then shimmy it. <laughs> Is that a word, shimmy? Shimmy it on, that's what I do. Cool? 
Cool. Thank you. I probably should have started it. All right. So I'm going to do this one with the, with my tail. So this is my beginning tail. And I'm going to do that. So that way I start down here at this end and go up. You can start either way. But in my opinion, it's e easier to use this one and go up because then I can hide my tail up here in this area versus hiding it down here. Does that make sense? All right. So I'm going to thread this. Watch this one will give me trouble. <laughs> There we go. So my yarn is already attached over here, but I still like to do my figure eight. So I'm gonna go up this one. Nope, we do not cast off at all. Our cast off is where we pulled the yarn through, through those stitches. So I went up that one, up that one. I'm gonna come back over here and go up. That's what I mean. This is so easy. It's an absolute beginner pattern. All right, so I finished over here. So over here, I'm gonna find my smiley face. I'm gonna go up the smiley face. I'm gonna go my frown, smiley face, frown, smiley face. Now I'm going in on my smiley face. Some people will go right there at the edge. And sometimes I've gone right up the edge. I don't remember what I did in my YouTube video. I mean, really at the end of the day, it's whatever works, whatever works for you, whatever makes you happy. There are no knitting police people, no knitting police. So as you pull this closed, see how those lines, they all line up really nice. Come up to the top, over there, over here, and over here. This one's tricky. So I'm just gonna kind of pop up. I think I'm at the top, so it's, it's in there. There it is. There. Okay. So you can pop this down to the right or the wrong side. Once again, once you're in here. Oh, don't pull it too tight that it cinches things up too much. Secure things in place. With the big bulky yarn, it makes it real easy just to pop through the stitches. And then I'm gonna just cut that one because I, I secured that one all the way in on the inside already. It is a gnome size hat. But there's a little tiny hat, just garter stitch. Now, what you could do if you wanted to, so like I had mentioned, if you wanted, if say the top of yours isn't closed as nice as this, because I didn't have very many stitches. Yours has a lot more stitches, okay? You can take um, crochet thread and weave it through, like not weave it through, just thread it through that and secure it to make it you know, really nice and tight. And then you could add a pom-pom. Um, so I added pom-poms to mine. And what you will notice, um, especially if you use this big bulky yarn, make a really big pom-pom. Don't, don't skimp out on the pom-pom because it just makes it look really good at the top. And it just makes that nice little slouch, okay? It makes this nice little slouch. Now this pom-pom, I actually secured it to the hat. And when I made the pom-pom, I, um, you know, when you make a pom-pom and you tie in the center to make it all come together, I use cotton thread for that. And then I tied it to the, or I secured it to the hat with the cotton thread. So that way it's not, this one is not coming undone. See my cotton thread right there? It's not coming undone. Okay. If you aren't sure if you want a pom-pom, here is something else you could do. Use, <laughs> use a big button on the inside with your thread. And then if you want the pom-pom to come off, you just untie your thread and you can remove the pom-pom. I, I never remove my pom-pom, so this is, uh, I got myself a knot, that's all right. I haven't removed this since I made it, but I can pull this real close, let me show you. So here's my pom-pom. 
and then I just thread the two two strands through the top. And if I put them through the button, I can now just tie these two strands really snug and it just really tightens up that pom pom right up to this my hair by the way my hair has never gotten caught in this if you have really long hair and the hat is close to your head yeah it probably will i've never had a problem so i've never worried about it um and i've been doing this for years like making my pom poms like this but just tie a bow right you can double knot it you can do whatever you want and then you can remove it if you want but at the same time like this pom pom is secure. It's not going anywhere. But that's that's the hat, you guys. That's it. And like on the the video of the hat, I just pulled from each each side. You could on this one I went I went up to each garter. You could go just each row and go up and seam it up. I mean, it's whatever makes it look good for you, but that's my seam right there. And what you'll notice is like all hats, like at the stores and stuff, they all have seams in them because they all, they're all made flat. And if you want it to look really awesome, get yourself a leather tab or a cork tab and add it on there to signify, you know, that it's yours. You can do all sorts of fun things, but um, that's that. So now I'll answer questions. <laughs> we have a bunch, which is awesome. Um, First of all, I'll, I'll drop the link to those tags in the chat for everybody because they're super pretty and cool. Yeah, they're um, cute. yeah so I so that's ready to go so people can get their own if they would like. Um, let's see, one person is asking, Kathleen is asking, how do you count the rows if you lose your place? Do you count the cast on row as a knit row? Do you skip that? And do you count the stitches on the needle as a row? So the stitches on your needle as a row, um, it depends if you're counting your stitches as they're just like you're just you, you finished and you just have them here. That's a row that you finished. So if you were to maybe you did rows one through 15, you're like, oh, I lost count. And you started counting row 15 is on your needle. Does that make sense? Row 15 is on your needle. So you would start row 16. Your cast on row typically does not count as a, a row. So if you're counting rows, it does not count as a row. If you, for this pattern, you don't have to count rows, but if you were counting, you could count your ridges and each ridge is two rows. So you could go through and say, okay, there's my cast on. And then here's a ridge that's one, that's two rows. There's two rows. There's two rows. There's two rows because garter stitch creates those ridges and each ridge is two rows. Does that answer your question? Um, so for this, like the beauty of it is that you don't have to count your your rows at all. You just you just knit. Okay, and then a couple of people are asking, do we have time to see how to make the pom pom? Um, I don't have my pom pom maker with me, but I do have videos on how to make pom. Can I give them a link to a video? Absolutely. Okay, let me do that. Let me grab let me grab the video link. Because um, I have that and it's really in depth. So, I mean, I have several pom pom videos um, you can look at. Let's see here. Um, here, I'll do the one that I did for this hat. This one uses a Susan Bates. Uh, let's see, get share of link. This one uses a Susan Bates pom pom maker. I will be honest, it's not my favorite. Um, my favorite pom-pom maker is the Clover. So I'm going to show you that one too. I'll give you that one. Susan Bates is, is less expensive than the Clover. Um, so depending on what you want to go for, did I put that in there? Did that work? Oh, I did. I did it twice. <laughs> Maybe. Oh no, there it is. Did I do it twice? We're good. Yeah. I did it. Okay. Um, there's also one more, it's a palm and tassel maker that's by Susan Bates. Um, I do like this one though. So it's a different one than the first one. So there's three different ways to make pom-poms, but the biggest thing, um, if you guys want to go to my face, you can, the okay. biggest thing when making pom-poms, um, this is my biggest piece of advice because people will complain that their pom-poms fall apart as they're pulling the center, use crochet thread. 
use crochet thread like a size three. I don't, I mean, I'll use size 10, but I prefer size three crochet thread. And when you wrap the center, wrap it with crochet thread and really wrap it really tight, really tight. Um, that's the best advice I can give. Um, and then honestly, the Clover pom-pom maker is, is the best pom-pom maker on the market. It's fantastic. And I don't get paid by Clover. So that's, I'm telling you, it's the best. <laughs> um, so yeah. And then if you watch those videos, I really, I walk you through how to make a pom-pom. Um, and then if you want to attach the pom-pom, like I do, like I have, or maybe you want the, one of those faux fur pom-poms. I have a video for how I attach those two. Um, so I just put that in the chat. Also, if you are interested, essentially it's the same thing with the button. Cause then you could take them off to wash the hat and then put it back on. Um, I think they're great. Um, have you ever made pom-poms with your fingers? Um, I'm so old that that's how I do it. No, uh, I, yes, I have. No, I don't do it. Um, I prefer, I prefer to use tools. <laughs> Let's see here. Uh, any other questions? We have one about how many stitches do you cast on for like a six to nine month baby hat? Cause I think it, the pattern starts at toddler size. It looks like it does. So, okay. Let's think about this logically. Um, and I'm going to, this will help you guys out for, for other patterns too. So we know that this is just knitting, right? So we have a gauge it's, um, 1.75 stitches and four rows per inch. So 1.75 stitches, let's just count that. So 1.75 stitches, we're gonna multiply that by, and that's every inch. So it's 1.75 stitches per inch. A toddler head is probably what, eight or um, a, a nine month old. I mean, what are they 18 inches around? I don't know. Like, <laughs> I, let's just I say, remember. <laughs> I don't remember either. Let's say it's 18 inches. So if we take 1.75 and multiply that by 18 inches, that gives us 31.5. So we would need 31 or 32 stitches for that size hat. Um, so what you'll notice though, is the toddler size is 18 and a half is what I wrote it. It's eight, it's for 18 and a half um, inches around. But I mean, if you're making something for a six to nine month, I mean, you don't, I mean, their heads, I'm thinking about when my kids were born, I'm like, how big was their head? Um, but it's, it's basically that if you were to measure around the baby's head, just multiply what your gauge is, and that'll give you how many stitches. And the fact that this doesn't have to have any decreases or anything like that, you can have an even or an odd number of stitches. It doesn't matter. Like it's, it's really that easy. You guys, like you, you don't even need the pattern just, you know, it's how many stitches are you getting per inch? Multiply that by the size of hat you want make it to the height you want and then just pull it all together and seam it up just like what I told you like it's 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 so easy it's so easy and I know I keep saying so easy I apologize <laughs> um any other questions um that's probably I think that's about it I don't know if we have time for the the depth of some of the other questions that are oh. being asked so hopefully um hopefully the recording is super helpful we'll send the pattern link i'll send i'll include the links to all the pom-pom videos okay. in the email tomorrow too so hopefully hopefully that's okay. super helpful for everybody um and of course yeah of course the pattern link so yeah I mean, I yeah think we're good. i see people asking for the printout the pattern is it's just it's on my blog it's all of the details all the information is on the blog um i know that there are people who will copy and paste the pattern places if they want um, you have an option for that too, if you want, but that's, that's how this goes. Yay. I don't know. I hope I did well. I hope you guys like give it a try. Like, seriously, it's one of my, here, I can put it on. Like, it's one of my favorite hats. Like, I love this hat. It's so squishy. It's fantastic. So there's a bunch of yarns very similar to this on the market. You can go check out, but they're fun. Yeah, there's right. there's that website yarn sub that you can like search if, if a yarn is discontinued and it'll come up yeah. with not discontinued patterns, active active yarns. I don't know how to yeah. right, right, right. <laughs> that. Yeah, and this um, is a big bulky yarn. Like I know there's lots of yarns on the market you could get with this. I mean, but I mean, even the Bernat blanket, I mean, it's it's a good yarn to choose too if you wanted to give that a whirl. Mm -hmm. It's fun. Yay. 
Awesome. All right. Well, Marley, thank you so much for doing this class. It sounds like I, there's lots of wonderful thank yous and your awesome comments, you know, coming up in the chat now, which is, which is wonderful. Um, if anybody needs to get in touch, oh, actually, there's a there's a fifth slide um, with our contact information yes. on it. If you want to do the screen share, you can tell we're out of the we're out of this data. <laughs> I know. It's, I know. Let's it's see here. A minute. I'm clicking it. There we go. There okay. We go. All right. So I'm Dana. Feel free to email me. That's my direct email address, or you can always email events at primecp.com. That's the email that should be in the like the Zoom emails you got about the class. Um, if you have any questions about anything, you'll get a link to the recording. Oh my gosh, the dog is so cute. <laughs> I know. She's been waiting here the whole time. Aww. So I'm sorry. This is Pearl, everybody. I'm sorry. I don't know if they can see her, but. And it's spelled like pearl and knitting. P U R L. Right? Yeah, she's yeah. my pearl. If I ever got another dog, I would name it Brioche and call oh, it Brie. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so cute. Oh, wonderful. Um, but yeah, be, be sure to follow Marley. These are all of her um, social handles. And then, of course, on YouTube, we talked about Marley's wonderful YouTube videos that are available. Um, and again, thank you to I Like Knitting. Uh, if you guys want to sign up for the magazine, I'll have that link in the follow up email as well. Um, yeah, I think that's everything. Thank you again, Marley, so much for leading today's class. It was awesome. All right. Bye. Bye. Okay. Bye, everybody. <laughs>